Hey friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would do another plan out a card style video. Um, I did one of those I think last month or the month before and you guys seem to really enjoy it. So I thought maybe I'd try it again and see if this is something that you guys find helpful. So um, today I wanted to plan out a card and this time I've already kind of limited down my supplies to what I think I want to use, but I have not figured out a layout or anything like that. So I thought we could do that together. So I wanted to use the Hello Bluebird Gallery Frame number seven. This is one that I really enjoy using and I think I have not used it since Christmas time. So it's time to bring that out again. And then for the stamp set, I pulled out this Bloom and Grow from Hello Bluebird. I have been all about my garden lately. I put that in um, a couple of weeks ago and I've just been really loving, you know, watering it and nurturing it and seeing things start to grow. So I thought I might try to use this one for today's card as well. I've never combined these two products on a card. So I thought that I might try that. Um, when you're working with a die like this that has like smaller windows, you have to use images that are kind of small as well that will fit inside. So I think this one is going to work, but we're going to lay out everything and kind of figure out placement. And if it doesn't work, then I'll just have to find a different stamp set to use. So I'm going to grab a piece of paper. Hold on one second. So I'm just going to lay out this die and then I can grab my stamp set and try to figure out where I want everything to go. So I was kind of thinking, let's start with the biggest image here, which is the bear. And I think he just about fits there. Um, I think that he might just hang over the barest part of the edge or, you know, be back behind it, depending on how I, if I pop it up or leave it flat. Um, but I think he fits pretty well there. So let's do that. The next largest image is the little fox. So rather than having two large images up at the top and then having smaller images fill in the bottom, I feel like that would kind of not be balanced as far as like the weight of everything. So I think we'll take the fox and put him catty corner to the bear. We could also switch it. We could put the the bear down here. That could be cute too. And we could put the fox up there. Maybe I actually like that better. Okay, let's leave it like that for now. And then let's see, we have a bunny that we could use. I'm thinking the bunny on this side. I don't want everything way over here, so maybe we can put the bunny more in the center and then find some things to put behind. Maybe we could put some of these flowers behind. We could layer it like that to make it look as though the bunny is kind of sitting in a little patch of something. And let's see, we have some more little pots that we could put maybe right here. That might be nice. Now the fox is holding a watering can, so he should have something as well. So we could either do another little pot here, which I kind of like that, or we could do these little flowers. Either one would work, but I almost liked the pot better there. It almost extends the scene a little bit as well, even though there will be a divider in between because we've got the two little pots here and then another pot there. So it makes it look more like a seamless little scene here. So maybe we'll use these flowers back here, down in this corner, kind of balancing out the flowers up here. Or we could swap these flowers and this larger patch of flowers, but let's just wait and see. We have one more critter that we could use. There's this little 
mold that is kind of coming up from the ground here. And then we've got um, some accessory images and we need room for a sentiment somewhere. So the sentiments here, we have the Hello Sunshine, which we could put in there. That would kind of fit perfectly. Or we have this larger sentiment, but that larger sentiment, if we put the larger sentiment in, then we can't use any of these little critters because it takes up the whole space and it just fits. So we could do that if we wanted to. I don't know. Maybe we should save that big one for the inside. I kind of liked it with these here. I just feel like that was a little more balanced. You know, at this stage, I'm just kind of figuring things out and trying to decide. We've also got some smaller little critters here that we can add. We've got... Um, some butterflies. Could put a butterfly up in here because we've got some empty space. Maybe right up there. What else? We've got. I feel like something should go in here. There's a little bee. The bee could be here. But then that doesn't feel balanced to me because they're both there. So then maybe I have to add another butterfly over here so they all have something that could work. Worm here. That might be cute down in front of the flowers next to the mole. We could put this little gardening tool somewhere. Maybe there next to the flower. That could be fun, just to add a little more detail to the scene. There's also a bird, but I don't think I really have room for it. Unless I put it there, but then it seems kind of crowded. Okay, so maybe we save the bird for the inside of the card, because I don't really see a spot that it fits. You know, I'm pretty happy with this. I think this is good, so I'm going to grab my phone and snap a photo of it. Okay, so now I've got a picture there of exactly how I want that card to come back together. I'm gonna grab my Misty. So I'm just gonna carefully slide that off. I took the off the sentiment because I don't want to stamp that right now. And then I can start to figure out how I'm going to stamp these out on here, how it's going to fit the best. So I usually lay out the largest images first. And I usually just sit here and kind of um, put it together almost like a little puzzle. Just put things, try to get, you know, as many space nicely on this sheet as I can. But I still want to you know, leave room in between so that I can tape the die cuts over top without uh, having to run it through a million times because I place things too close together. So I always try to make sure that there's some room between everything. And that looks good. So now I can close the door of my Misty and pick these up. I will grab my favorite Lawn Fun Jet Black ink. And I'm just going to ink these all up. Make sure I'm getting every little nook and cranny of those raised sections of the stamp. And then I'm going to grab my Pressure Pal from Twiddler's Nook to get even pressure as I stamp these down. Since I'm stamping multiple images at once, that really helps. Okay. And I always stamp my images twice, at least twice, usually twice is enough. On some images that have really fine lines, it doesn't hurt to do it a third time just to make those lines a little bolder. And as long as I'm keeping this paper in the corner as it should be and not moving that, then it should stamp down exactly in the same spot. That's the great thing about 
using the misty rather than like an acrylic block or something like that then it's um, so hard to line up perfectly that you know it's hard to stamp down more than once let me just take a quick perusal here and see if there's any lines that don't seem dark enough I can see that there's a few little places where the stamped line is a little darker than others so I think I am going to just selectively ink up the fox maybe the mole just so everything is a little more consistent here that's pretty much it so we'll just stamp those couple of things down one more time and there that's better okay so we've got our stamped images now so I'm just gonna clean these stamps off so that I can return them to the packaging and then um, I'll take a look at the pattern paper. I've got my dies and my stamps set and I've got my sheet here with all of my images stamped so those are all done but I still want to use some pattern paper. I know that I'm going to need two prints because I'm going to need one print for the outer part of this die and one print for this inner cross part. For this card, I'm not going to use any of these little um, pop-up windows. So just these two prints that I'm going to need. So I'm going to need a pattern paper that has two different prints that are going to work well together. All right, so here's a few of the pattern paper pads that I've recently bought and I have shared these with you in videos. I have flipped through all of these and kind of walked you through the different patterns that I might use together on a card. So I think I'm not really feeling this one so much. I don't know if I really am in the mood for these pastels. Maybe, but let's set this one aside for now. Um, let's see, we could use this one here. I do like the range of colors here. Uh, we also have this one, the Flora number six from Cartabella, which I have not used yet. So maybe let's take a look at this one first. And what I'm looking for is two prints that would go together, but the print needs to be on a small scale for you to really get the impact because you're only going to see a small sliver of it. So a print like this is going to be fine because the flowers are kind of small and clustered close together. A print like this, it's not terrible because there's plenty of pattern mixed around so you will get parts of it but you could end up with large sections of just the green depending on where you place the dye on this pattern paper so that's just something to keep in mind um, you might want to um, you know not just put the dye right in the center but kind of take into account what exactly is going to be cut out if you were to use this one I do really love these two together though I think that would be really gorgeous but I don't know I might want some, something with a few more color options because that one is just basically pinks and greens and maybe a little bit of yellow so we could use that but let's just see what else we've got here this one would not be bad at all because the flowers are on smaller scales there's a few larger ones mixed in there but in general there's smaller scales and the pattern is packed in really tight so even no matter where you put this die on this sheet of pattern paper you're gonna get a lot of color and print on there um, the color palette is still fairly the same but we do have also peaches in here we have pink peach we have this more like a yellowy peach um, and then the green so that one is a possibility too let's see that one could work as well but again it doesn't have much of a color palette for all these images so I don't know there's a lot of images in there to color this one could work as well because the are smaller scale not super small but they're really packed in tight so that one could work actually we could do something like this and this one together I think that could be pretty so now we've got like this maroon, we've got this kind of reddish 
orange type, almost like a like a deep salmon color. We've got some golden yellows. We've got some lighter yellows in some of these flowers here. We've got some browns in the centers. And we've got green. That one might be a good one for this. I think that one also would complement neutrals really well because we've got the brown and the golden shade. So, um, and the, that almost ties in with the orange of the fox. Just trying to decide if I really want to do this little dot pattern because once again, depending on how you lay that inner part of the die out, if you don't get it lined up just right, it might not look right. It might be fine, but I'm just going to see if there's another option in here that might work a little bit better. Maybe this pink floral. Maybe we could do those two together. Because this print is more scattered and not just in rows, no matter how you lay out that die, it's going to show. Or we could go with this print here as well. This one has a lot of color mixed in, a lot more options. We've got some aqua blues. We've got some like um, indigo. There's some purple. Maybe we should actually go with these. We've still got those kind of reddish coral shades. We've still got some browns and the golden yellows. I think this might be the best option for this card here because we've got so many different types of flowers to color that I think that that would be really pretty to pull the color palette from. So let's go ahead with these two. That's gonna be the card. So I'm just going to tuck this in there for now. I'm not going to actually make this card today. I'm going to create it tomorrow and it will be up for you guys next Friday. But anyway, that is how I walk through the whole process of coming up with a card concept. I really hope this was helpful for you guys. Please do leave me a comment down below and let me know if this is something that you guys find helpful, you know, I could probably do this every month because this is something that I do on a weekly basis. I just don't film it. This is something that I usually just do, you know, on, typically it's on Sunday. Um, I sit down and I plan out all my cards for the week, but I think if I did multiple, it might be too time consuming in one video, but Anyway, if it helps you to kind of see how I plan out the card and then see a video where the card comes to life, let me know. And then, you know, if it's not that interesting, that's totally fine. It's, I can just go back to doing them all, you know, in my off time. So let me know your opinions. I'd love to hear it. And thank you guys so much for watching this one. I really do hope that it was helpful to some of you at least. And uh, I'll see you soon in another video. All right, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.